Assembling a high quality model steam plant, this is part 12. Mounting the parts on the baseboard and piping the hand pump to the water tank and the boiler. And I can't say I particularly enjoy doing this. I'm not really into woodwork. I'm drilling some holes in the baseboard and these are the holes through which long screws are going to hold the main steam engine to the baseboard. My original plan was to initially lay out the parts on a piece of wood cut to exactly the same size as this baseboard and then drill all the holes in that and transfer the holes across. But in the end I did it this way. I drilled four holes in the baseboard, turned the baseboard over and deeply countersunk them on the other side and as it turns out the countersinks were not deep enough so I had to further countersink the holes underneath the baseboard once I put the screws in and found out that they stuck out a little bit. This is a really nice piece of wood and it's going to look great with all the parts mounted on it. But unfortunately it's not waterproof and it's not oilproof. I've noticed that any spots of oil that got on the wood stained it. So what I'm going to do before I finally fit everything to the board is I'm going to rub it down with some sandpaper and wipe in some polyurethane varnish and I'm hoping that this will prevent any staining in the future. And as you can clearly see, I'm rubbing down the top surface with some sandpaper. This is 280 grit, which is about right really. It cuts through the surface, but doesn't scratch it too badly. Before I fasten everything in place, using a cloth dipped in polyurethane varnish, I will wipe the cloth all over the top surface, and then wipe it off. I don't want it to look varnished, but I do want it to be fairly stain resistant. But for the moment, I'm busy positioning the engine. I need to get the engine in precisely the right place because the fitting on this board in certain areas is quite tight. This may seem illogical, but I thought I would mount the water tower first. The Twin Victoria is in precisely the position it's going to be in, and what I'm doing at the moment is using my small Minicraft drill just to make small marks at the mounting point locations. Because I can't get the drill perfectly square, I'm not drilling a hole, I'm just making a mark. If I let the drill go too far into the wood, the hole will be at an angle, and that's no good at all. It's fairly nerve-wracking doing a job like this, because I don't want to spoil the board. I think positive and try and do the job properly. If you dither about, you're more likely to make mistakes. I'm using my trusty DeWalt drill, and I've fitted a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill into the drill chuck. And attempting to hold the drill at the right angle at all times, I'm drilling four holes, quite deeply into the baseboard. And in this clip, which of course is speeded up, I'm using a 4BA tap to thread the holes. And with the video running at this speed, it takes no time at all. But in reality, it took a while. I didn't have to do this, I could have just used some brass wood screws, but this is much better. It makes the part removable and refittable whenever you need to do it. Whenever I do these kind of jobs, I always think about serviceability and I never make anything permanent. I'm applying one drop of cyanoacrylate adhesive to each of the holes and then by using a needle file I break the surface tension on the cyanoacrylate adhesive so that it flows down into the hole. And once the cyanoacrylate adhesive has been applied I'm using my sandpaper just to make sure there aren't any burrs around the holes. Here I'm just checking that the holes are in the correct place and the good news is the holes are in the correct place. Now it's time to mount the small block that will hold the hand pump. For this I'm just using a twist drill held in my hand to make a couple of marks in the baseboard. To mount this block to the baseboard I'm going to use some wood screws. So I'm just drilling a pilot hole into the baseboard. This steel block needs to be securely mounted to the baseboard and for that reason I'm using a pair of long posi-drive screws. I would never normally use screws of this type on a steam installation but in this case the pump sits on top of them so you can't see them. It's time now to drill some pilot holes into the bottom of the main baseboard that the engine is sat on. And for this the engine is propped up on its side and so is the baseboard. And you can't currently see the engine because it's on the other side of the baseboard. Initially I'm using a 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill because that's the same diameter twist drill that I used to drill the hole in the main board anyway. I didn't drill all the way into the engine's plinth with the 3 16 of an inch drill. And now I'm using a very small drill to drill a pilot hole quite deeply into the plinth, followed by using four very long screws to hold the plinth to the main baseboard. And it was at this point of the job that I realised that the countersinks that I originally made underneath the baseboard were not deep enough. So I countersunk them a good bit deeper, 
Always remember to do this. It's no good at all if any of the metal parts, like screw heads, stick out below the baseboard because when you move the baseboard around on a flat surface, deep scratches will appear in the flat surface, which is definitely not very good if you put it on your dining room table. Once the main steam engine on its plinth is mounted on the baseboard, it's time to mount the water tower. And to mount this, I'm using some 4BA countersunk brass bolts, which hold the water tower very securely to the baseboard. In this clip I'm using a cloth which is soaked in polyurethane varnish to spread the polyurethane varnish on the top of the baseboard. But don't forget it doesn't want to look varnished, so once I put it on with this cloth, I wipe it off with this cloth. And after the varnish had dried, I can continue with the job. This is the worst job ever. Really, I should have just used a couple of screws, but I thought, well, brass hexagon bolts will look a lot better. Off I went with my small spanner and this has speeded up and it took ages and I didn't even bother filming the other side and that took a lot longer because there wasn't much room to work. But at the end of it I think it's worth it, it looks great. And I'm sure you will agree. The next thing I need to do is pipe up the pump. I'd like to just take this opportunity to mention before a deluge of sad people write in to criticise my work like they do and tell me Oh, that pipe's wonky. It's not. It's the camera angle that makes it look like it's not perfectly vertical. The copper pipe from the pump to the tank is at a perfect 90 degrees. Time now to test it and see if it works. First of all, I'm adding some water to the tank. Oh, and by the way, the outlet pipe from the pump to the boiler, I forgot to feature that. I silver soldered the pipe after bending it and forgot to press record because sometimes I'm very incompetent in the camera department. And as usual, I said incompetent, not incontinent. As you can see, the water goes up the glass very quickly, so the pump is working fine. The next thing to fit will be the Stuart Models HB6 boiler. I featured this in the last episode, where one or two leaks were detected. But it's okay now, all the leaks are fixed. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.